Our leading academic, Anshu Podiachi, passed away yesterday. And known for her work in education in the varied fields of technology, e-waste management, research and criminology, Podiachi was also the co-founder of the advice desk for the abuse, which originated in Durban. She served as both the deputy and acti uh, acting vice-chancellor of the former ML Sultan Technicon in Durban. And joining us in studio is a close friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Navi Podiachi former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. Thank you so much for your time and condolences to your family, friends, uh, loved ones and South Africans at large. Mm -hmm. If you were to just give us a sense of the contribution that Dr. Padiachi had made, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the liberation struggle, but also caring for the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Cindy, and, and for your wishes, which I will convey to the family. Thank you for having this focus on Professor Anshu Padiachi because she was a central pillar in serving humanity always, not only in the province of KZN but throughout South Africa. And you ha highlighted some of that in the introduction. She worked closely with government as well. And her recent project as CEO of uh, a technological concern where the focus was on training youth. So Anshu realized the importance of focusing on youth and their development because she taught students for so many years. And, and at the time when you were growing up as well, your generation, um, the environment was not necessarily conducive or supportive of women, let alone women of color. You yourself having been the first non-white jurist uh, to be uh, the head of the High Court in South Africa, very well decorated as Dr. Pad uh, Professor Padia, she was as well. You had been with the Ni United Nations as the High Commissioner for Human Rights. All of these accolades also come from the fact that you were raised by a village of people that saw the potential, uh, sponsored and did all they could to make sure that you as, as young women then were, mm -hmm. were able to thrive. You know, I was a young lawyer and we're not trained to do social work and, and be concerned with pupils. So it was Anshu who approached me. Both our daughters were friends at school, at primary school. And so I came to realize the importance of translati translating rights to people, especially women. So I learned my lessons from women, but mainly from Anshu, who not only had the rhetoric about ending gender-based violence, but she did something about this. The both of us founded the advice desk. It is still continuing at the University of UK Zen. The students are running it now. And you're quite right. It was very difficult in our times. Um, and the first interview aired on TV on uh, violence against women was done by the TV station in my office, and that was very new. So the messages are spread awareness, education. These are uh, Anshu's methods born from experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and she helped many women. The f two of us used to actually advise women from our homes before we set up the organization. And then the two of us went to see the apartheid era chief magistrate in Durban. To, so how can women get interdicts from being battered in their homes? They chase out at night. They have nowhere to go. The courts are not helpful. And I pointed out an old apartheid era section in the Criminal Procedure Act where, where I suppose white people could get peace orders against black people who were making a noise or disturbing the peace. Yes. And we persuaded the magistrate to get peace orders for women. And that's how it started. We also opened the first shelter. All these are very difficult to run because there was no subsidy from the state. Mm. Uh, but all these helped many women. We wrote a very simple book. I'm surprised how many people, women told us that that helped save their lives. Mm. To me, it was just a simple book. But, but it's, I think the, the capacity to love as well with Professor Padiachi and, and yourself having founded the advice desk is largely because you couldn't bear to see uh, women being 
abused, violated, while there were laws that could protect us. And sometimes that level of ignorance also perpetuates the, 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 the violence against women. Looking at Dr. Padia, uh, Professor Padiachi's contribution and what South Africans need to take away, we are in Nelson Mandela month, you know, in, in, in the spirit of Ubuntu, humanity, love and care for, for, for humankind. What, what would you want South Africans mm. to take away from her legacy? Well, you just use the right word. It's called caring. So we have to listen to other women. You know, at first people thought Anshu and I were being beaten at home because why else are we focusing on gender-based violence? So you learn to listen and try to help. Even a word, even listening to them helped you, empowered them in, in my days. Today, I don't think there's a need for much empowerment. Young women will never tolerate the uh, kind of uh, atrocities that occurred in my time, where we were, we had terrible laws under apartheid. Uh, we have come a long way now with uh, the constitution which spells out the right to equality. So what Anshu taught me and everybody else is the importance of serving others, caring for others. Such simple language, but she put that into action. It wasn't just rhetoric for her. Yeah. And may we emulate those characteristics um, and virtues as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, really, really appreciate it. That's Dr. Navi Pele, former United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, also paying a homage to Dr. Padiachu, who passed on yesterday. You're welcome to continue with us on social media.